What is up, everybody? This is Pastor Matt Stokes from Coastal Christian, and it is Monday morning, and we have the morning meditation. And I am here with my co-host, Jesse Stokes. Good morning. And uh, we are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on this Monday morning, looking forward to getting back into some of Second Timothy chapter 3. If you didn't get a chance to see any of the previous morning meditations from this chapter, we wrapped it up in a summary um, yesterday morning at Coastal Christian. So we would love for you to take a look at that. You can go back on the Facebook page. I think it's there. And it's also on YouTube under Coastal Christian Matt Stokes. And we'd love for you to watch that and really um, get a handle on what Paul's talking about in regards to his letter here to Timothy and the last days and what's happening. Um, it was a pretty gnarly list of characteristics and we went through them all as we looked at what the last days look like and there'll be an interesting turn today that's a little more encouraging as we get into these next verses so i'm going to ask jesse if he'll pray for us and bring us into the morning meditation and we'll see what god has sure lord as we um just enter into your word this morning enter into your truth lord that you would uh, speak to us, Lord, yes, Lord. Um, by the Spirit. Uh, Lord, thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Yes, and thank, thank you that you. we have the ability to understand your Word. We thank have you, the Lord. ability to um, comprehend what you want to communicate, Lord, mm. to us. Thank and you, I pray that we would, um, Lord, if there's anyone that um, just has a hard time understanding biblical things, God, you would give them clarity of mind. Mm. And that you would give us energy, Lord, as uh, we arise this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's a great prayer for energy, right? Um, so as we are looking into the word this morning, after yesterday, we come up with, I didn't, I didn't actually get a chance to highlight down to verse 9, which is where we left off. But verse 10, after he talks about being lovers of self versus lovers of God and covetous, blasphemers, disobedient, unthankful, unholy, truce bakers, fierce, traitors, high minded. I think there's a list. I think it's 18 characteristics is at least what I counted. Um, after you come down and he talks about how, you know, um, we're supposed to actually, uh, where's the verse? Oh, from such turn away. And it was a hard thing as a pastor, I'll tell you yesterday, um, to be, to say that in the midst of the congregation, because I, I want to be encouraging and filled with joy and hope and encouragement, but it's also my responsibility to tell people what it says in the scriptures. And it says to turn away from such. Um, and that's why I said, and I'm, I'm firmly convinced that you need the leading of the Holy Spirit to know when you should be looking at verse um, um, 25, where it says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, perhaps God will give them repentance. When are you in verse 25? And when are you in verse 5 of chapter 3, where it says, of such turn away? You've got to be walking with the Spirit and in Christ to the degree that you know when you're supposed to gently instruct someone and when you really need to just give someone away and give them over to God, reprove them, correct them, turn away from them. That is not easy, but it's what the scriptures call us to do. And somehow God is big enough to reach into every life and to bring everyone to repentance. So we leave that in the hands of God, but we know for our own spiritual life and protection and to be free from that spirit spiritual toxicity within a church where there can be someone who's we learned in the last chapter gangrenous or even cancerous we need to turn away from that person to protect the fellowship everything changes now as we move into verse 10 where it says look it says but and you guys know i love that word because that is a word of transition that means we're going to kind of change gears from what it was we were talking about. And this is what he says. After all of that about their folly, they won't proceed any further. God's going to reveal them. But you, Timothy, you have fully known. And then he gives them a list of what he's fully known. You have fully known what, Jess? What's, the, what's it say? My doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that is a much more 
satisfying list to read than the list we were going through last week, all right? Although it does include what persecutions and afflictions. Um, so let's take a look at this, and this is where we'll spend a little bit of our time today. <clears throat> he says, you have fully known. And I look at that and I just think, wow. He's saying to Timothy, hey, you fully have known this about me. These particular pieces of my character, of my nature, of who I am as a person, you've known this about me. You've known my doctrine, right? Which is, <clears throat> what would you say is another word for doctrine, Jess? My beliefs. Well, okay. I would say I would leave beliefs for faith, okay. but I'm going to say for doctrine be teaching, okay. right? You've known my teaching. Yeah, that's how my uh, translation says it. Actually, it says okay. It says teaching. Yes. C A C A. You've known my teaching, and then he says you've known my manner of life, and I'm going to say for that that's his his conduct. Yeah. D U C T. And, and then he says, you've known my purpose, right? Which is such a powerful thing to be able to say, because your purpose is, guys, that's your aim in life, right? You've known my aim in life, and you've also known faith, and Jesse said, what did you say? Uh, right, you've known my beliefs, right? I'm gonna put that out here, B E L. I E F, and then I'll, I'll get into the end, and then I'm going to actually these three. Let's let's just talk for a minute about this. Look at the, what he says. You've known my teaching, you've known my manner of life, and you've known um, my purpose, um, and you've known my faith. Right. So when I look at that, I think you know Paul uses his. And this is worth writing to guys. Let me see if I have another pen for this. Um, he he uses what his own life as an example um, exclamation mark because I'm saying man I he, how many of us can actually how comfortable would we be to say hey you guys know everything about me you know my teaching you know my conduct you've known my aim in life right you know my beliefs what a powerful thing to say in fact there's another place where paul says something very similar do you know what it is just be followers no. be followers of me as i am of christ no, jesus no, no, no. can you look that up and tell us where that is in scripture so paul me. yeah be imitators yeah well yeah that might be your translation right so mine says, be followers of me as I am of Christ Jesus. So what a powerful thing to say. In other words, in this Corinthians 111, be first? imitators of me as I am of Christ. Wow. Okay. Follow me as I follow Christ. First Corinthians 1. 11, 1. Oh, 11, 1. Okay. Now imagine that, that you would walk so closely with the Lord that you could tell other people um, that they could actually look at your life in order to see what it looked like to be a true follower of Christ, genuine follower of Christ, authentic, sincere follower of Christ. And you've got to remember, in these days, they didn't have the New Testament. So if you really wanted to follow Christ, that's why Jesus said what? Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and teaching them whatsoever I commanded. Because basically what Paul has is the Old Testament, and the teachings of Jesus. And he is so familiar with the teachings of Jesus and his intimacy with Christ that he's able to tell other people, hey, you can follow my example. You might not have, um, you might not have Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, but you have me and you know my teaching and you know the way my life has lived it out, which is another piece that's so important to talk about, which I want to say, um, I'm going to put this up here, uh, that guys doctrine d-o-c-t-r doctrine is doctrine is important everybody you got to know your doctrine you've got to know your belief but doctrine is is followed 
by lifestyle. There might be a better way to say that, but that's all that's coming to my mind this morning. In other words, you know, I've heard people say to me, oh, you ought to meet my brother-in-law. Man, that guy really knows the Bible. That guy really knows the Bible. And I'm thinking, I don't mean this in any kind of um, harsh way, but so what? Lots of people know the Bible. Tell me about how your brother is living out his lifestyle by the Bible that he reads. Um, because that's what's most important. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not what? Do what I say. And not do the things that I say. Right. So, I mean, what's most important is obedience. Obedience to the Father. Obedience to the call of Christ upon your life. Obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you can't obey what God has to say unless you actually read his word and you know the doctrine. It is so important to know the teachings of the scriptures. And then what backs it up is your manner of life right is your manner of life is your conduct and when you have the teaching and you have the manner of life that's backing it up what's going to come naturally is is your aim in life is going to be solid set steadfast firm it's going to be accurate it's going to be precise when you take that aim like a bow and arrow you're going to be right on point and when i think about our aim in life you know all of our aim in life is is really the same right jess our aim in life so what does the westminster catechism say is our aim in life the chief end of man is to glorify god and enjoy him forever right so the our aim in life all of us is to glorify god Maybe you want to do this right now this morning is just take a little piece of paper and write down my aim in life is to glorify God by B-Y and then how you glorify God may be different than how I glorify God and how Jesse glorifies God. But the aim of all of our lives is to give God the glory. Even Christ himself, as the Son of God, it says every knee will bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to what? Glory of the Father to the glory of the Father. So our job is to continually bring glory to God. That's our aim. Christ is the perfect model of what it looks like to give the Father glory. And and Paul is a perfect model of what it looks like to give Christ the glory. There's something really beautiful in all of that. And so I'm hoping that you see how important this list is and how precious it is when we really take it into a meditation and think about the importance of our teaching and what we're learning, the importance of our conduct. And even, you know what, that doesn't mean you're perfect. Paul wasn't perfect and I am not perfect. But you know what, even when I fall, even if I stumble, even if I sin, if I make mistakes, I'm going to show you in my manner of life what it looks like to get back up and keep on going on with the Lord every day of my life. It doesn't mean I live a perfect life. It means that I have a, a wonderful relationship with Christ, one that's filled with grace and mercy and forgiveness and compassion. And I'm going to show that to you by the way that I continually experience his forgiveness and I confess my faults in my manner of life and I move on. And in doing that, I give God even greater glory because I'm giving glory to his compassion and his long suffering and his patience with me. Now, that brings me to the next thought. Unless, Jess, is there anything anyone's written that uh, that you want to, any correspondence that you wanted to mention? Uh, Isabella said, knowledge of the word is one thing. Putting it into action is another. Mm, how true that is. How true that is. Uh, John Feldauer says, his grace is sufficient for us. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. That's right. Tracy says it's beyond wonderful to be back at church. Oh man, we all, I just, I was going to text you late last night and just say, I actually watched the video yesterday and like watched you. It was almost like you taught the sermon. So I like watched it just watching you. I love your facial expressions when I was talking about being um, boastful. It was so funny. Um, you even made the face of somebody that's like conceited. Remember when we were little, I don't know, did this happen to you, Tracy, when you were little, like kids would say about each other, you're conceited. Do you guys remember that? Did they do it at your school, Jess? No. He's so conceited. That was like a huge, <clears throat> like 80s word. It's just funny when you think about it. He said he's a jerk. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. That works too. Um, John Feldauer said, doctrine, biblical doctrine is defined as the biblical teachings 
that are found in God's Word. Mm, nice. The biblical teachings that are found in God's Word. Excellent, excellent. Well, why don't we finish up talking about these last three, long-suffering, charity, and patience. And the reason I want to talk about them is these three characteristics are what you would call communicable attributes. Whoa. Yeah, I know. In the university, at least that's what we would call them. And I'm going to write it down here and then. Does anybody have any guess at why they're called communicable attributes? C O N. I gotta spell it right. Mm -hmm. I uh, look it up for you. Communicable attributes are the fact that God is um, is not being so conceited. That's right. Communicate like God has attributes. He has a nature. He has an essence. He has character. He has attributes, <clears throat> and. Some of those attributes are, are 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 not communicable. Okay, we are not eternal. We're not infinite. We are not omnipotent. We are not omniscient. We can't be in every place at one time. We're not immutable. We never change. Right? That's what God does. We do change, actually. But there are God does have some communicable attributes, where, which are attributes of God that actually we can mirror. We can shadow them. We can reflect them. And through Three of them are right here. One is long suffering, one is charity, which is actually love, and the other is patience, right? Um, and so those are the attributes which, if we really spend a lot of time in God's Word, looking into His face, he, we are going to then begin to reflect, like in a mirror, it says in Second Corinthians, we're going to start glorifying, reflecting His glory in the way that we start looking more and more like Christ. Christ's long-suffering, which just means to suffer long, okay? That's an easy way to define long-suffering. Charity is love. And, and of course, we want the old King James uses the word charity because in the old days, you know, we think of charity as like giving your things away. Mm -hmm. And that's because giving things away was the, you know, the quintessential sign of selflessness. And that's what love is. Love is considering the best of someone else regardless of your own self. Yeah. So the word charity got translated later into the American English word love. Yeah. And then lastly, there's patience, which is the ability to bear up under uh, under difficult amounts of pressure. Uh, I didn't look the word up in Greek, but usually it's hupomone which is a, uh, two words, hupo, which means under, and moni, which means agony. And it's bearing up under intense amounts of agony, which we know is reflected perfectly in Jesus Christ on the cross. And we see his love throughout his life, and we see his patience with all of us throughout his life on the earth, and even today. And so I'm saying, can you, as you look at this, can people see these, these characteristics communicable in you? And also, you know what? You really gain a lot of benefit when you hang out with people that are long-suffering mm -hmm. and loving and patient. Because it really is true that you are who your friends are. And the more that you spend time around people that are patient with each other and long-suffering and loving, you're going to have that same character, nature, attributes reflected in yourself. Right. And just any other thoughts from you on, on these particular verses? Yeah, I just... You know, long suffering and patience seem to go together well. Mm. Um, you know, I think we have this idea that we have to, um, you know, be like happy all the time. Mm. Right? But the Bible talks, you know, about like there's some people that, you know, you talked about this that are like harder to love, you know, they're just, we don't mesh well with them. They're yeah, right. Different personalities, different <clears throat> right. values. We talked about it's true. how when we have clashing values, it makes it hard to uh, love someone, for example. Um, like if somebody has a, a value of being on time and that person um, is really slow to get back to you. Right. Or um, always right. showing up late for the time to hang out. <laughs> right. It can be frustrating. Right. right. Some people can sure. get on your nerves. So um, the Bible talks about bearing with one another. So it literally, I think it means like like putting up with someone, like enduring for the sake of Christ, um, you know, we have to, uh, love covers a multitude of sins, so we have to um, sometimes endure, um, you know, certain of our desires and pet peeves and 
yeah little things you know right and that's that's all how love really plays itself out in like practical ways it's like you know are you willing to you know sometimes people say like man this this thing or this person really pushes my buttons right i heard a pastor say well go buttonless <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> don't, great don't have any buttons for people to push that's great like, don't don't let yourself be bothered like just yeah you know yeah endure and you know be patient and and I, so in light of just what you're saying, I think what you're saying also is this, that when it comes to these characteristics, they're tested. Yeah. And so that is probably very well the reason why Paul, Paul put them on there. Like he didn't say, um, you know, you, but thou hast fully known my haircut and the way I brush my teeth. Right. Yeah. Like he's talking about things that were challenging in his life. Right. The ability to actually put his doctrine into actuality and then put that all into the context of the right purpose yeah. and then for his faith to actually overcome his his trials and his challenges and his oppositions right you've known my long suffering like the reason he's saying these particular attributes is because it's supposed to inspire Timothy to say you're right that is true I have seen that that is reflected in you and then find the motivation to to and then embrace the determination for him to live that way himself right um, because remember the context of this book is that Paul is setting Timothy up to be the best pastor he can be regardless of, of Timothy's youth or regardless of um, his um, lack of experience, he's going to say, I'm sending you out and I'm pouring into you everything that I have. And I want you to watch me be a reflector of me. Watch the way I handle persecution. That's what we'll talk about tomorrow. Watch the way I handle affliction. You've seen how I was patient with people and my love was unconditional towards people, right? How I bared intense amounts of pressure, how my faith preserved me in the midst of really difficult circumstance, right? Yeah. So, you know what? That's a lot for today to really just take in and absorb because there's a whole list here. Any one of these would be a morning meditation in terms of purpose of life and just what it means to walk in love and to have have doctrine be the have doctrine be the foundation, but to build to build on that a lifestyle and then to build on top of the foundation of doctrine and lifestyle to have an aim in life to continually glorify God in all that we do and say. So like, let's take that into the day today and see what God do, does as, as we watch him work through just these verses right here. Yeah. So just why don't you wrap us up with a word of prayer and just pray in this, this little passage right here and then we'll start our day. Father, we, come to you and ask that you would help us to uh, grow in our doctrine. Lord, we would know what we believe and why we believe it through the study of your word. Lord, yes, help Lord. us to have um, good conduct, godly conduct, a holy lifestyle, Lord, not just um, words that are positive, but actions that follow our statements, Lord. I pray that we would have an aim, a purpose, that we would have the same purpose as Paul when he said, um, okay, when we said, um, one thing I, I desire is, is uh, to know Christ in the power of His resurrection. Amen. We pray Amen. for uh, yes. a deeper faith, Lord, that we would have a growing faith in You. That, that we would so. suffer along with others and circumstances. We would have love and patience, Lord, and we would endure persecutions, Lord. And, yes, and lastly, Lord. God, that we would um, just we just want to lift up Israel. Lord. Yes, we just Lord. Want to lift oh up God, this war. Uh, we want to pray against uh, spiritual Satan. wickedness in five places. Lord, we want to pray against anti-Semitism. Yes. We want to pray against um, um, the evils yes, that are Lord. happening. Lord, we pray for salvation to, to break forth in Jesus' name. And uh, pray your will be done, Lord, your kingdom come in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. Again, if this was helpful to you, you can share it with someone. Um, somebody asked me earlier this morning um, how they could get the Sunday morning um, meditation or the Sunday morning message. You can always go to YouTube by the end of a Sunday night at the very latest Monday morning and you can send that to someone. As far as the morning meditations, guys, if you're not on Facebook, Jess, I don't think you can actually take this and send this to someone if they don't have an account, right? I can um, post these on YouTube. 
Okay. Um, I haven't been doing that lately, but. All right, let's try and do that because I have people that are asking how they could watch these, but they don't always have a Facebook account. All right, so just to let you guys know, if this was helpful to you, you can share them. And if it's really helpful to you, man, we would love to have you with us at Coastal Christian at 930 at Dolls Avenue School. And please continue to pray for us as we're, as we're asking God to give us, you know, a bigger heart for his house and where he would have us in the days to come. Guys, thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, please do post them on YouTube, Deborah said. Deb, I was actually uh, referring to you I, as I was setting up today. I came across your messenger, and you were like one of the three people I was thinking of that was asking. If you go to Coach Matt Stokes, there's already uh, a lot of posts of the past morning meditation. Okay. But I'm going to just try to uh, do the do Okay. The that would be YouTube, and you would type in, do a search on Coach Matt Stokes, and you would see a lot of previous morning meditations. Jesse's going to see if he can get us up to some speed. Hey, it's going to be one year on Thanksgiving. It's going to be one year that we've been doing these morning meditations and these evening prayers. So it's been just, that'll be a real yeah, interesting anniversary to celebrate, right? Yeah. With the exception of a few uh, surgeries and things off, um, times off, we've gone a year in morning meditations and it's been such a blessing for me. I am, I hope it has been for many of you. God bless you guys. We look forward to seeing you. I hope tonight at some point we can come on and get back to some evening prayer. We'll see what the Lord has Monday night, Monday night. Is there anything you're thinking? Is there anything in, coming up tonight? Okay, maybe we'll see you guys. God bless you. Have a great day and go forth in God's word, in your manner of life, in your purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and patience. God bless you guys.